Genocide is an ugly subject that needs to be shoved into every generation's face because the deliberate extermination of some targeted group by their own government occurs somewhere in the world during every generation. This is a, the opening lines that you saw at the beginning of this uh, short video is uh, the opening line of an article that was found on the big Hollywood site and it's about a, a film, a documentary film called Never Again and uh, this particular film was directed by Carla uh, Garapedian uh, and she wants to deal with the Armenian Genocide, which almost none of us has, have, have ever heard of. It was uh, accomplished in 1915 by the Turks, where uh, one and a half Armenians uh, were, were, were eliminated in a, in a Holocaust. Of course, we hear about the Nazi Holocaust, uh, which was a, of, of, of the Jews was certainly a terrible, terrible thing, but preceding that was the, uh, was the elimination of 1.5 Armenians. Uh, my association with Armenians uh, has, has only been recent. Of course, R.J. Rushduni is Armenian. Uh, David Hagopian is Armenian. Uh, R.J. Rushduni's family escaped this uh, uh, Turkish genocide. It's one of the reasons why his family uh, is here in the, United, in the United States today because of the Armenian genocide. But we hardly ever hear about that. In this particular um, article, uh, is critical of uh, Never Again, this is uh, called Screamers, uh, music by System of a Down. I've never heard of, of the, the, the group System of a Down, but I'm sure they're out there somewhere. Um, it, and it goes on, it says, Screamers is about exposing the denial of all genocide, Armenia, the Holocaust, Cambodia, Bosnia, Co uh, Kosovo, Rwanda, and Iraqi Kurds. Uh, and the current horror, horror in Darfur, uh, it is about making sure the same critical message George Clooney and Don Cheadle are screaming about is heard that these atrocities never happen again, says Garapedian. Uh, and, uh, but genocides, as this article says, genocides always happy, happen again, and the film's exclusion of two reasons they do started uh, this, this, the author of this article screaming. First, why are the mass killings of the Nazi socialists repeatedly named while those committed by communist socialists are ignored? Second, why is there no mention that the Armenian Genocide and all the others were preceded by a lawful disarming of those to be slaughtered by their own government and that those who broke those laws fought back and often lived? And so what you have here is while you know, Nazi atrocities are, are, are pushed, pushed to the fore, uh, communist atrocities are, are not. And the reason is, is because there is this affinity among leftists today of, of Marxism. And so they don't, like, they don't like the backstory of Marxism. They don't like uh, the, the type of thing that, that happened in Cambodia or the 100 million the Book of Black Communism says uh, the, the 100 million who died as a result of communism uh, and, 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 so, and, and socialism as well. Of course, we forget that Nazism is, is, is in fact socialism, but very few people talk about the ideology of Adolf Hitler. We only hear about the fact that he hated Jews, which in fact he did. But there was a, there, the, the worldview, the economic and political worldview of Nazism is in fact socialism, national socialism. That's what Nazism is. The author goes on uh, to say here that uh, of this article, goes, she would have had the uh, uh, she would have have had the properly researched the, she had properly researched the subject, or maybe she did and found it politically incorrect. And his point is, you know, when people talk about these genocides, they really don't talk about the the political side of things and the gun control side of things. Um, here's what Don B. Uh, Cates Jr. in the Washington University Law Quarterly wrote. Having systematically disarmed Armenians through a series of decrees, the Turkish army and police were able to round up and kill over one million Armenians by a combination of overt murders and forced marches over hundreds of miles without food or water. 
However, thousands of Armenians from uh, Aleppo province, modern Syria, who had uh, secreted guns, took to the hills. Having defeated the first Turkish army units sent against them, they retreated from stronger forces in good, or good order until they reached the sea where the British, who were at war with the Turks, evacuated them. This is the same thing that, that kept uh, the Soviet Union out of Afghanistan because the Afghanis were, in fact, armed. And they weren't armed with fanciful weapons. They just, you know, had uh, rifles and, and some other um, uh, uh, co-opted weapons and drove the, so and the Soviets back. If they had been unarmed, the Soviets would have come in and taken over Afghanistan. Um, the Armenian pr uh, prelude to annihilation was not unique. Uh, here's an, another quotation, this one from Emory uh, University law professor Alexander Sasha uh, uh, Volkov. Uh, the Nazis disarmed the Jews, the Khmer Rouge disarmed the Cam Cambodians. One Cambodian survivor called Khmer Rouge soldiers uh, to, told the villagers, we are here now to protect you. No one has a need for a weapon anymore. This all took nine or ten days, and once the soldiers had concluded the villagers were no longer armed, they dropped their pretense of friendliness. It is an arresting reality that not one of the principal genocides of the 20th century, and there have been dozens, has been inflicted on a population that was armed. We argue a connection exists between the restrictiveness of a country's civilian weapons policy and its, li and its liability to commit genocide upon its own people. Uh, I mean, this is so important in our own day because we keep uttering the phrase, never again, never again, it can't happen here. Uh, but in reality, you begin to see uh, around the world, you have a disarmed population, uh, you, have, uh, you have tyrannical political thugs who see a disarmed population as easy pickings and they will end up eliminating them. We've saw it, we saw it happen in the 20th century. Uh, can you imagine coming here in the United States and trying to do that? You couldn't do it. We have, we have an, a, a, an armed citizenry, uh, hundreds of millions of, 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 of firearms in, in homes across the country. Uh, no one could come into the United States and do that sort of thing. But if we are disarmed, if our government, in the name of trying to keep the peace and bring down crime, would disarm us and, and make owning a firearm illegal, uh, then you could see, all, all, I would say, talk about our borders being open, I could see a great deal happening in bringing, in, in bringing uh, uh, armed tyranny here to the United States and there would be not much we could do about it. Uh, and you think, oh, our government would never do such a thing. Well, they did it with gold. Uh, remember FDR, he made it illegal to own gold. Uh, and so it could be, there is always the possibility that they could do something here in the United States. Uh, the, the statistics are clear. We have a microcosm of that here in the United States. Uh, those cities in which the people are armed, crime goes down. A case study of that is right here in Georgia, not too far from where I live, in Kennesaw, Georgia. This was a reaction to an Illinois uh, decree that said that uh, guns were illegal in, in, the, in the political boundaries of this particular section of Illinois. But in Kennesaw, it was mandatory that the head of a household own a weapon. And the, the, the crime statistics in Kennesaw, Georgia are way down. Why? Because criminals don't like risk. They don't like going into a home where they think the owner of that home might be armed. What's true on a small scale is also true on a very large scale. Now, nations where the population is in fact armed, those nations are not going to be taken over by tyrannies. Switzerland is a good example. Uh, the, they have a civilian armed population. Uh, it'll be very, very difficult to fight the Swiss in any sort of, of, uh, of, of armed conflict because they are all armed and trained with their arms. So there is a history lesson in all of this for us here in the United States. Uh, an, an armed citizenry is a free citizenry and keeps us uh, from tyranny. For more related to this topic, check out God, Guns, and Gold, Foundations for Christian Freedom. You will find it at AmericanVision.com.